Yeah, one of the difficulties with labels and diagnoses is that it <coughs> tends to imply that, you know, these people have dyslexia and nobody else needs to be, needs any particular intervention or work on their reading, and that's not true because reading is not natural. None of us, our brains never evolve to read. So learning to read is something that is a very active process that requires excellent teacher training and, um, and very uh, active work with students as they, as they are emerging as readers. And so many, 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 many of the reading problems that we see in our nation today uh, are not due to dyslexia. They are due to very poor instruction. And to some extent, um, a, 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 a background that doesn't provide them with a lot of good language experience when they're, you know, as they're growing up. So, um, here's my brain picture, the one and only one. Um, at what happens in dyslexia is that, um, well, let's start with a non-dyslexic reader, an average reader with no particular uh, tendencies toward dyslexia. If, when you look at um, fMRI scans, functional magnetic resonance imaging, what that allows you to do is see the neural networks that are active, they light up. And in a non-dyslexic reader, if you put that, that person um, in an fMRI, in a scanner, um, and, and ask them to read, what you'll see is uh, there will be, uh, the left side of the brain will light up. It will start with the occipital lobe here in the in the back of the brain, in other words, you know, the, the visual, um, and then move to a couple of different language centers. There are fast connections that go in a loop, around and around, that have to do with sound, uh, uh, sound recognition and, uh, and meaning. So that uh, those connections are, need to be developed in everyone. Uh, you know, as, as children develop and grow. The, uh, an impaired reader that we might call dyslexic has a different fMRI. And what you see here on the left side of the brain, which is where all our language centers are, all we're seeing is one, one area lighting up that's in the front of the brain we don't see any of the, either the occipital or um, one of these or other language center here. What happens instead is that the right side of the brain tries to compensate for what's not happening on the left side. And what we get is, uh, what we get is some neural activity here, but it's the right side of the brain uh, doesn't have the same level of speech uh, and language capacity, so we end up getting, um, and so the reader then gets sort of mixed messages and doesn't make those sound symbol connections that are necessary. Interestingly enough, when we intervene early enough and thoroughly enough, after intervention, uh, such as a really good multisensory uh, structured language program, you'll see in the impaired reader uh, neural networks that look much more like the non-impaired reader. So we can make a big difference with good, consistent instruction that, um, <clears throat> that has uh, a, a scientific basis to it. Okay. Um, so, what we need to do in order to really address the issue of dyslexia is we, we have to look at it as a science. So we have to view it through a scientific lens. 
Um, dyslexia is not a problem of motivation. It's not a problem of, of uh, laziness or low IQ or anything else. It is, in fact, um, a brain-based um, a brain-based disorder um, that affects that is not the fault of any uh, anyone who actually has it. So the other thing you have to accept is, as I said, reading is not natural for people. I know school districts love to tell people, oh, he'll pick it up. You know, when he's ready, he'll learn. That is not necessarily true, and we know that now, and we can prove it. Um, that, in fact, it's not like speech, which did evolve and does come naturally. Reading very much relies on how we hear sounds and how we manipulate those sounds, Be even before we see printed words. So if we are not, if a child does not clearly hear sounds and recognize that words are made up of individual sounds that can be manipulated, uh, then that child is going to have a very difficult time making a connection from a sound to a letter. And therein lies one of the core deficits of dyslexia right there. So reading is something that has to be taught, it has to be supported, and it has to be sustained. So learning sound symbol connections and being able to read the word cat and, uh, uh, and cute and so on isn't enough. We have to continue on with deep reading and lots of practice and so on, and grammar and all kinds of sentence structure, etc. Um, one of the common misconceptions uh, is a cartoon of dyslexic atheists. Um, and that atheist is spelled wrong, which is sort of interesting. Anyway, um, it's, dyslexia is not a mirror. Sometimes people think, oh, that uh, a dyslexic individual will look at words or phrases and see them backwards. Actually, that's not true. It is true that they sometimes, uh, there will be uh, students reverse letters like B and D they'll reverse numbers, and so on. That, that actually, uh, that can happen in any emerging reader. Um, in, but it's particularly uh, common amongst dyslexic children because they, uh, you can imagine, you think about a B and a D and how much they look alike here. They're just inverted. And let's assume and think about that b and d sound a lot alike. If you are not perceiving sounds clearly or and or, you are uh, you're processing sounds more slowly, you don't pick up the, the, <coughs> the small differences between the B and the D sound. The, and so on. Consequently, if the student doesn't have a clear distinction between b and d, which actually, as it happens, occur very, the sound is very fast, if they don't have that clear distinction, they're not going to be able to map the sound to the letter very accurately. Over time, we can, we can, we can work with this, but it's you know, it's something that uh, the longer it goes on, the harder it is to correct. So the hope is, is that we, um, very important is that we do a lot of preventative uh, work in, in schools with emerging readers, giving them foundational knowledge about sounds and symbols and blending them together and so on. So, um, here are some experiences, uh, you know, here's some things that we've heard here. Um, we oftentimes get calls from uh, school districts uh, wondering what to do about certain students that they have. In this case, this was a public school teacher who um, 
was looking for help to, um, as to how to create an IEP for a fifth grade students. Um, and, you know, she was just had no idea what do I have to do. I thought, this, I thought they were all mentally retarded, which is really pathetic because dyslexia has no connection whatsoever with intelligence. As the example of Thomas Edison shows, I mean, he's brilliant, but he doesn't process language uh, very well due to how his brain processes language. He processes lots of stuff very 